Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dawn of Drones. I'm Dawn Zoldai, your host and the CEO of P3 Tech Consulting. We are almost at the end of 2022, which is kind of insane. And we've dedicated this month to the quote unquote best of 2022. Uh, this is sponsored by Sage Tech Avionics this entire month. So we thank Sage Tech. And this episode is sponsored by ATA LLC. We've got an incredible guest, John Eberhardt, the CTO of ATA here with us. So welcome to the show, John. Thank you very much, Dawn. Great to Actually, be back. Actually, yeah, I was just gonna say, welcome back because uh, for those that have been following this show, John was actually one of our guests last year in November, which uh, was Innovation Month. And uh, so much has happened in the past year uh, that when I ran into John at one of these, where did we see each other, John? Was it at Commercial UAV? Yeah, no, that was in California at the Future of Aviation Conference. Oh, the Future of Aviation Conference in August. And I'm like, hey, what have you been doing? And then it was just like, whoa, my head exploded. I'm like, you got to get back on the show. So here he is. And uh, we're going to catch you all up to date on, on uh, ATA and what they've been doing over the last year. But John, before we do that, could you just very briefly tell us a little bit about your personal background? Yeah, sure. Um, so my background, you know, is in uh, what's called data science. So that's data analysis, data engineering, data processing, statistics. I ended up coming to aviation basically through some work that I did as a consultant for the FAA. Um, and as I learned about UAS, I, I went to my business partners and said, you know, this is a pretty cool space and we can do some really cool things. And so um, I'm basically bringing all my background in software development and engineering and and working on some things that I think are pretty exciting and I'm looking forward to talking about. And I want to show you something real quick. So Ooh, show and night, tell, we love that. Show and tell. So last night I, I got the inaugural Ellie from Elevate Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, look at that. For the Pennsylvania UAS industry. It's actually a really, really nice award. Oh, um, that's so beautiful. I'm going to have to hide it from my children, but, uh, uh but <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. And, and many thanks to John Deuser and David Heath for that. So, yeah, Pennsylvania Drone Association, uh, uh, you just said David Heath's been doing great things. David was on one of our other shows this year, uh, the full crew earlier in the year. Um, so I love what they're doing. And you know, John, right, that I'm from Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, where, where are you from? Not Philly, yo, like you can take the girl out of Philly, but you can't take the Philly out of the girl, as they say. So, uh, yeah, you, I know. So I have a special soft spot for what's going on there. And, uh, I love what David and the team are doing out there. Uh, but let's, let's kind of pivot to Virginia and, uh, ATA and what you've been doing with the Virginia fix or the Virginia flight information exchange. So, uh, again, great show last year. We went over this in, in a very ex excruciating detail, but I know you created this in partnership with the Virginia Department of Aviation, the Virginia Innovation Partnership Corporation, Virginia yeah. Department of Transportation. So can you explain to people what it is for those that don't know this Virginia fix? Sure. And, and so I think, um, you know, the short explanation is, is if you look at the FAA's concept of operations for UAS traffic management or UTM. They have a box that's called the Supplemental Data Service Provider, or SDSP for short. And in Virginia, we had a conversation about four years ago, and the question was, what can Virginia do to help the industry, right? What can Virginia do to help the next phase of flight and help operators, help industry? And we realized that we have a lot of data here in the Commonwealth that's inside of state and local agencies and state and local government that we can provide to industry is a, a free public service. And so that's what Virginia Fix is. Uh, we call it an authoritative uh, SDSP, and it's a free public service that's meant to help with safer, more effective flight, and then data sharing and some new stuff that we'll talk about today. Well, I know we're going to dig deep into this. And what I want to do first, John, is roll a video where the Virginia Fix, we can see it in action. So. Uh, you know, picture paints a thousand words. Let's go ahead and roll that, and then we'll talk a little bit about it afterwards. Thank you all for coming for the first Shenandoah Apple Blossom fly-in, where we're going to have a lot of fun showing what we do in our careers in aviation and show what we're doing in aviation in the Commonwealth of Virginia and in Winchester, Virginia, and show some of the great stuff that America's doing to lead the world.
We are here today in beautiful downtown Winchester, Virginia, during their very historic and beautiful Apple Blossom Festival. And today what we're showing is how drones can be used for package delivery. We're working today with several partners, most notably with DroneUp and ATA Corporation, and we are actually delivering food items to the parade route below. We'll take off here, fly about 1,500 feet down to the other end of the festival and deliver the package, simulating what we do with other companies. I think drone delivery is a, is a great start. Uh, we're going to need to figure out how to deliver more packages. And it's just going to get more and more automated, and you'll see it expand further and further out so that most of the country will be able to order something and have it delivered within 15 to 30 minutes to their house. That, that was amazing. And I, I know, John, this was uh, what they call the Apple Blossom Festival. Was it in Winchester, Virginia, which is your where you're from or where you live? It, it, it is my hometown. Um, in fact, uh, you can probably see my house off in the distance. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we, we so we wanted to show the, the, the fix in action. We wanted to show the value of these public digital services. We wanted to show the value of, of providing data sharing and safety data to the industry. And so, um, you know, Tracy Tynan from VIPC was interviewed in that video. She helped make this happen. Uh, Dr. Amber Wilson and Greg Campbell from Department of Aviation supported it. And I think you saw DroneUp in there, right? So DroneUp's one of the partners that we're working with on the fix. Um, we'll talk a little later about is a long list of really great industry partners that are working to help make this happen. Uh, but basically the idea was to say, look, if, if we can all share data, if we all have a common operating picture, that we can actually conduct a lot of drone flights in a very small area very safely. And so we actually ended up conducting about 40 flights in uh, about a one square mile area over a 30,000 person festival crowd. Wow. And, um, it was pretty amazing. And, and you know, I think that the signal achievement there was I was actually able to get fried chicken and ribs uh, delivered by drone. As I told my friend, uh, I can probably retire now since I've achieved my purpose in life. There you go. Very cool. Well, so like at the heart of it, then th what we're talking about is UAS traffic management. And you dropped a term earlier that for those that are maybe not fully initiated, may not understand. You mentioned this SDSP supplemental data service provider. So let's walk it back a little bit, take it up to a higher level to fully appreciate what this Virginia fix is and what you guys are bringing to the fight here to enable drone technology and, and kind of widespread use, things like drone delivery. So explain how important SDSPs are to UTM. Yep. And so I think you know, the, the key to SDSPs is that they provide a lot of the services that you would otherwise get from the FAA if you're in conventional aviation, right? So things like weather. So Don Burkoff at True Weather, everybody knows Don. You know, he's one of our partners, right? So so we work with Don to both consume and provide weather, but we also provide weather data sensor, weather sensor data to him. Um, information on things like surveillance. So where are the other vehicles, right? Um, where are the aircraft, where are the drones? Uh, and then, you know, information on what what we call procedural deconfliction or configuration. So things like, hey, where's the sewage plant? Because you really don't want to land in that. <laughs> hey, uh, no, you the really don't. That, that would be a shitty day, no pun intended. <laughs> done, right? Um, and, and, you know, nearby, you've got the water tower and the cell tower and the power lines, right? There have been a lot of stories about issues with, with power lines. And so being able to provide all of this, the what are called the UAS service suppliers, right? So folks like Aloft and AirMap, they can consume this data and make that available to pilots so that they can have a safe, effective flight. Right, so you, you use the term also UAS service supplier, so acronym world, that's USS. And all of this, John, right, is emanating from the FAA NASA CONOPS for UTM, which I believe is in its version 2.0 right now. Yes, and I think yeah. they're releasing version 3.0 very soon. 
Okay. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Uh, fun fact. You just heard it here. 3.0 UTM con ops coming out soon. Okay. So a, how does ATA, ATA then plug into this UTM framework? So, so we are basically, uh, I like to think of us as the plumber of UTM. Um, uh, Chris Cusera from one sky who I love, he, he, he thanked me for doing the crummy work of UTM, like the non sexy part. So the, the way this works, right, is we, our model is to work with state and local and regional government to create these public data services, right? And so it's public data, it's free, it belongs to the public, but then our, our, our model is we plumb that, right? We do the plumbing so that there's an application programming interface, so a, a digital interface, so that the UAS service suppliers, right, who the FA have, have kind of designated as the folks who are going to do the flight planning, the compliance, right? the kind of local level, making sure that the drones don't fly into each other, they can digitally consume all of this information and data, right? To make sure that not only do you not fly into your friend's drone, you don't fly into the water tower or land in the sewage plant, right? Or, hey, you know, today's actually pretty windy. You might want to consider, you know, flying later or using a different vehicle. Yeah. So to kind of, you know, when I think, when I hear your plumbing analogy, I think you're kind of clearing the pipes, if you will, because, you know, when you think about data and all the information that's out there, even at, at the local level publicly, it's all in different places. And so I could imagine as a drone pilot, uh, right, you're out there, you've got this app open for your weather. You've got this app open to get notifications of what's nearby. You might have some access to a separate map of the local area. And I, he I think what I'm hearing you say, John, is that you've plumbed all of these in a way that connects those pipes into one pipe so that the, that you can have a one-stop shop and open up and see all of these things at one time. Yes, and, and our goal is to make sure that you see that in your, in your ground control software, right, or your USS software. You know, I, I was telling someone at FA a few weeks back, in, in, in the ultimate world, no one ever looks at the interface to my software. Right, it just goes to, you know, your DJI control software. It goes to your before you fly. It goes to your loft. It goes to your air map, right? And and that's how you, to your point, you see it all in one place, because you know regular you know, conventional pilots don't look at nine different screens when they're flying an aircraft. Well, got, well, they've got a couple things. I mean, we know they're looking at a few things, but yeah, the the less the better. I mean, I, you yeah. know, everybody talks about multitasking, and some people think they're very good at it, but you know. NASA actually did a study on pilots, uh, I think on astronauts that showed, you know, people actually, humans can't actually multitask. They cannot actually do multiple things at one time well, but what they can do is rapidly task in a serial manner, you know, from one thing to another. And those are the people that can be very successful, right? But in your case, putting it all in a one-stop shop is ideal. Now, John, you're doing this through, I believe, Correct me if I'm wrong here. This information hub you're calling AirDex. Uh, so tell us about AirDex. You know, AirDex is our product name. Most people will never hear about it because um, you know each of these programs is called a flight information exchange. And so we really put the state or local program first. But AirDex is the software suite. And what that's that behind the scenes, is, John. It's, it's behind, behind the scenes. Okay, gotcha. Behind the scenes, right? I, I, you know, I, I could call it the you know. The intel inside, but that would I think be maybe flattering myself. <laughs> uh, maybe some, maybe someday, right? But but the key there is that provides all of the input and output interfaces. So it's what allows us to consume the, the ADSB data, which is a aircraft surveillance mechanism. It allows us to consume the radar data, the weather data. Um, we've actually recently connected it to some public safety uh, 911 dispatch systems. So, wow. you know, you can, yeah, so you can start to see events in real time, but then it also has the outbound interfaces, right? The things that talk to the USSs, the things that use the, the ASTM UTM standard, right? Those things that, you know, more acronyms, right? But it's basically, it manages those ins and outs. Um, it provides a, a governance framework, right? Because one of the things that's really important is that the public agency that publishes the data and owns the data has the ability to set um, you know, rules and, and quality for the data, right? So people can say, look, you know, I'm, I'm fond of saying government data isn't always perfect, but at least it's official, right? And yeah, so every piece, of data, yeah. right? every piece of data in the system has an, an owner, 
Um, and so that allows for this to be, you know, high quality public data. Um, so yeah, that that that's kind of the, the the thing inside that makes it all work. Well, and I know that the the fact that this is public data is a it's kind of a huge foot stomp for you, right? Like, in other words, ATA, you're not looking to plumb this data and own it. Like this is all out there already in the public. You're just facilitating it to be useful in, you know, kind of one location for not only end users like drone pilots, but also government employees, public safety, as you said, right? Yeah, I mean, so you know, to use the public, the, 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 the fire and police and emergency dispatch data, that those systems are already public systems. The data already belongs to the public. There just isn't a way for you to see that data in real time, right? And and there's a whole bunch of like legal and procedural and privacy things you have to work out. I mean, you know, I, I laugh. I mean, because Chris, you know, I mentioned Chris was here. He's like, thank you for doing the crummy part of this work, right? But right. once you work all that out, right now as a private pilot, I can see, okay, there's a response to a four alarm fire. This is where the fire is, right? You know, let's say I'm news media. I know where to fly, so I'm not interfering, right? And putting people's lives at risk. Um, the public safety guys know. It's, it just it's yeah, it's about making all of this stuff available that generally already exists. Right. But you're just you're connecting the dots. Now you started this in Virginia, as we said earlier, and it's Virginia's first big step towards UTM. Uh, launched that fix for Virginia Virginia fix uh, in August of 2020. I think you started with nine agencies, if I recall correctly. Uh, two advisories in your first year. You grow to about over 40 agencies, and they've they posted about 1,000 advisories within that first year. How have you grown this past year in 2022? Over 50, uh, 50 agencies in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Wow. Uh, state, local, regional. There are, that includes 150 named users. So these are individual administrators and account owners within those agencies. Uh, we've actually grown the number of advisories to, I think, over 23,000. Uh, so, and a lot of that is because of the systems and sensor integration, right? So we're getting data, real-time data that's live. On any given day, there are about 800 current advisories. So if you're flying in Virginia and you, you check the fix or you go to before you fly and you check it there, there are about, on any given day, there are about 800 pieces of information that are relevant for safety. Um, you know, for example, we have a Hampton Roads, right, which is a very busy airspace um, and community in Virginia, and I think we even have an image of that. Um, and that, that Hampton Roads image, you can see there's multiple types of data in the system, right? So some of it is the, you know, so you can see the, the blue stuff, is, that comes from FAA, right? So that's the, your surface controlled airspace. It's right. your landscape right. maps, but then there's some orange stuff, in there, right? So there are, uh, you know, ground rules. So um, in here, there's a there's a reservoir that's not open to the public, right? So we let pilots know, hey, listen, this is not a place where you can take off or land. I mean, you, you can land there, you just won't be able to retrieve your vehicle because it's got a big chain link fence around it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, upper right hand corner, there's a hazard because there's a large fuel terminal. Uh, you know, probably not a good idea to crash your, you know, media M300 into the gas tanks. Right in the middle, there's a circle that's a public safety incident. So I talked about integrating the CAD data, right? So we let people know police and fire are actively doing something here, right? You know, please don't interfere with this public safety operation. And what's the supplemental rule uh, one that's at the bottom? That's a, that's a state forest. So, um, so you learn all these great things, right? So you, you can't take off or land in a state park at all, but you can take off or land in a state wildlife area or a state forest if you give them notice. And so actually, if you go to the fix and you click on that one, it actually gives you the name and the email of where you send your email to say, I'm gonna be flying on this day. And, and actually you don't even have to get a response. As long as you send them notice, you're legal. Well, I gotta say, I gotta echo what Brett Federson said out there, by the way, he's in the chat and he said, Virginia Fix is a great program, a regional leader. He dropped the link to an article about it. So thanks for that, Brett. Thanks for coming to the show. Thanks for watching and supporting. Um, I agree. So bottom line is, without the fix, none of this information would have been readily available, at least in a one stop shop. I mean, how many, I mean, especially the rules, John, like being an attorney, uh, you know, I mean, I, I kind of joked with other attorneys, it's like job security for attorneys that have a clue about this, because 
there's really, other than what you've done here, there's no real good place to find these local rules in an easy way. And to have something like this where I click on it and now I could send my email and get my permit. Holy shnikes. I mean, what a benefit to people. I mean, drone pilots, if you're out there listening, uh, and, and so you started in Virginia and you expanded beyond Virginia. This was a really big year for you guys. Tell us about it. So, um, so we, we've got to try to be succinct here. So <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, yeah, so we're working in Alaska. We're working in Alaska, both the, the state of Alaska, Alaska DOT and the test site. In fact, uh, Virginia and Alaska at the state level have signed a formal MOA to collaborate. So Memorandum of agreement. MOA is it? Yeah, yeah. memorandum so of agreement. All gotcha. the acronyms, you know, acronyms. Yeah. Right. So we'll be launching an Alaska fix in the first half of next year. Uh, we already have launched a Central Coast fix in California that actually went live just before Thanksgiving. So now we're working on all the stakeholder engagement to get all the data in. And and just like we were talking about supplemental rules, the UC system and the CSU system, right, the large university systems, they have specific rules for when you use university property, right? But now you can find it, you can find the contact, you can find the form, right? You can get approval. Um, so the, the Central Coast fix is live. Uh, we will be launching a fix in Northeast Ohio, uh, probably spring of next year. Um, that's already in the works. Uh, and then we're having active discussions in uh, Southern New Jersey. Uh, shout out to, you know, Ray and Ron at Ultra. We're having great a great time there. I mean, just wonderful communities, great people. Um, yeah, I mentioned David Heath in Pennsylvania drone. Um, we're, we're looking at setting up a Keystone fix in southwestern Pennsylvania to enable, you know, medical services. Um, and then I just, you know, got back last week from Oklahoma um, and some really fabulous discussions with the Aeronautics Commission um, and with, you know, Jamie Jacob at OSU and, and Daniel Plaisance at, at, uh, in Tulsa. So it's just been an amazing year. And I will, I will just say, I mean, that the people that I'm getting to work with make this job really, really fun. These are oh great. Oh my gosh. People. John, all those names you just dropped, like I'm huge fans. And we actually just this week had uh, Dr. Jamie Jacob on our leadership podcast, The Full Tilt. Uh, he, as you mentioned with OSU's uh, Unmanned Systems Research Institute at um, and working with the uh, Tulsa Innovation Labs folks uh, that you mentioned. So uh, so much going on, John, you gotta come out to Colorado. Uh, we are having so many yeah, good because, um, you know, next year, I mean, when you think about events in this industry, we've got geo week in February here in Denver. We've got, uh, AUVSI exponential in Denver. I think geo Int is in Denver. If I recall correctly at some point, um, you know, the list goes on and on. So hopefully I'll, I'll get to see you soon out here in Denver as well. Uh, so. Anyway, um, I want to, I want to kind of talk about, you mentioned these supplemental rules and laws are so yep. important and you were able to, to collaborate in the, Vir on the Virginia side, which I think was very significant for these other states as well, uh, to get a law passed that kind of connects information to the Virginia fix in a very official legal way. Can you explain what that is? I can and, and I want to be very clear about all of this. So we were not involved in getting the law passed. Okay. The law, the law was passed on its own. And I think it's very important for that because in the industry, we're very familiar with kind of the tug between the locality and the operator, right? And, and nobody wants drone bans and stupid rules, right? But on the same note, you can't go and tell a locality that they have no in control, right, over what people do in their community. And so um, Delegate David Bulova from Fairfax put forth House Bill 742 at the beginning of 2020, I remember, because mm -hmm. it was just before the pandemic, um, basically authorizing localities in Virginia to regulate takeoff and landing on public property. But what then happened was a stroke of brilliance on the part of the Department of Aviation and a lot of credit to Dr. Amber Wilson for running this process. Um, basically, DOAV promulgated the rules and worked with industry to say, okay, so the localities can regulate takeoff and landing on public property, but they have to follow the regulations through the Department of Aviation. Basically, it has to be in the fix. And if it's not filed through DOAV, it's not legally valid, right? And what this does for industry 
is again to your point gives them a one stop shop it's super clear DOV can make sure people aren't saying well i'm going to you know no landing for the entire count right that's not allowed right, right. You, you can't use this park ever that's not allowed right you have to have a good reason it has to be safety reason and and so this is actually a great example of how virginia was able to you know um you know do a king solomon right and and basically give the locality something that makes them happy in terms of being able to manage quality of life and safety but also give industry very clear operating rules that are not onerous right and make sure people aren't doing you know stupid stupid local regulations so no that that's huge and i, I was looking at my notes here john i can't i can't find it I'm, I'm so sorry i don't remember the name but i know auvsi just launched like a state level kind of legislative effort called drone something drone do you know what drone prepared, right? and drone prepared. so everybody prepared out there the yeah so people that are like involved in drone prepare listen carefully to what john is saying look at the virginia house bill 742 uh this makes an abundant amount of sense when you think about the information that is needed for safe flight especially in low altitude at the local level which is where it's going to happen so you know th this this effort that you've done you know with you know with the fix and then of course with folks in the legislature like taking that and running with it attracted a lot of attention to you john you you've like coalesced a lot of different partners this year so uh tell us about that <laughs> i know you've been out on the road like gumshoeing it for the past uh, 12 months but <clears throat> Tell us about the partners that you've been able to gather this year. year. <clears throat> it's been absolutely wonderful. And I already mentioned that, that we've been working with the Alaska test site, right? And that's uh, their acronym is AQUASI, which stands for the Alaska Center for UAS Integration. Uh, wonderful people. Uh, Kathy Cahill, Nick Adkins, Jimmy Parrish. I mean, these people are like, I, I love them, right? And then uh, we've been doing a lot of work with Virginia Tech and MAP, the Mid-Atlantic Aviation Partnership, um, you know, Tombo Jones is a fabulous leader. We're really lucky to have him here. Um, and, and so that's on the test site side, you know, and then on the USS side, we've got a number of different USS we've been working with, but they're really kind of you know, three and a half that have really stood out in, in terms of their engagement. And, and one obviously is Aloft, right? John and Brad have been great. Um, we're, we're feeding data into uh, before you fly and we're looking at ways to bring data back in and, and they're really committed to data sharing. Um, another company is OneSky, right? Great, great, super sharp folks. I actually saw Mike Tornetta last night. They were another winner of the Ellie Award. So, um, but but they bring a lot of value, right? They really understand airspace management. And then the you know the one and a half is is AirMap and DroneUp, right? Because they have a, a bunch of different software tools. They have dashboards, right? They're a USS. They're also an operator. Um, and and DroneUp's just been a wonderful partner, right? Because they they because of where they sit, they understand the totality of the, the, the universe, right? And so they, they're providing input into the services and the data from the perspective of a major operator. They also have the perspective of a USS and a consumer, right? So they've been, there. there's, there's an amazing partner. Um, in addition, you know, I, I met, already mentioned drone up on the operator side. Uh, we're starting to do some work with X-Wing out West because of some projects related to the test site and whatnot. And they're really, really sharp folks. And it also, for me, that that's important because it, you know, I'm fond of saying, you know, AAM is really a continuum. And people yeah. tend to say AAM and they kind of immediately go to EV tall, but it's really a continuum, right? And yeah. so you need the X-Wings and the drone ups and the Drobies all in the room for this, if it's gonna work. Um, you know, on the sensor side, uh, we've been doing a lot of different sensor integrations. And uh, I'll just talk about a few that, that, that you know, people, you know, there's, there's private discussions, but, you know, you know, we've been working with Equidyne, we've been working with Pierce Aerospace, we've been working with Iris, um, we've been working with Fordham, we've been working with Breeze N5 and IntelliSense and on the weather side. Um, so just, you know, and I mentioned Don, right? I mean, Don knows weather better than anybody. Yes. Right? And so this universe of partners, and we're always looking for more, right, is, is amazing because we're really able to move a lot of data around between the different participants. John, I wanna, I, before we talk about UTM, the affordable and sustainable UTM system, ecosystem, as you called it, that you're creating with these partners, and I know we'll have an image of that to kind of walk through. I, I wanna highlight something that we haven't mentioned yet. So not only do you have 
air decks in the background and these fixes that you're creating. But ATA also in and of itself acts as a USS. Is that correct? Separately and apart? So we are a USS, but I want to be really clear about that. So we don't market our USS tools. We're a okay. USS because if you look at AS, if you look at the standard, there's a role called the constraint provider or constraint manager. So we're a USS, we have a Lance USS onboarding, um, but we use that for R and D and for the ability to connect to FAA systems and to be able to provide these public data services. So this is very important because we are not interested in providing operator facing tools, right? We're not, we would much rather partner with a loft and one sky and air map than compete with them. And so while we are a USS, the way that a lot, we're not, we're not focused on providing, you know, end user operator tools. Gotcha. Okay. Just to clarify that, cause I knew you had that authority, if you will, as a USS. And now I understand it feeds into uh, not only what you're doing with the fix, but also with these other partnerships with the uh, other USSs. So it makes a lot of sense. I want to pivot for a second, John, and pop, pop up this slide. I believe it's Winchester. Uh, tell us, you know, walk us through, you know, how this kind of illustrates the UTM that you're creating that is affordable and sustainable. Sure. And, and so, you know, the idea here is, is we, in Virginia, we've been kicking around this concept uh, that's gotten a lot of good traction with some of these other partners that we're calling minimum viable infrastructure, right? And, and so, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out what this world looks like, right? And we're still trying to figure out what you need to make this stuff viable. So we've, we've come up with this concept called minimum viable infrastructure. And it's based on the idea that you only build what you need for the risk level. So the image that we're seeing in Winchester, um, and my apologies, because there's a lot of stuff in this, right? But right in the middle near the, the pinpoint, uh, you can see an icon of a little town. So that's a micro weather cell. That's actually provided by the city of Winchester for free as a public digital service. So wow. we basically hooked up, the, the city has a Davis that sits on top of the emergency operations center. We've hooked it into the fix, live real-time weather data, right? And then down by the airport, you might see a little tiny icon of a blue plane. So we've also plugged into the, the, the ops management and the ADSB sensors uh, at the local general aviation airport. And we're pulling that data into the fix and providing real-time awareness on, on crude, right? Traditional aviation, because you know, what's interesting about that airport is you can't really see it from the map, but kind of across the highway is a large FBI facility. There's a very large um, construction project going where they've got drones for site survey. And so, you know, providing this kind of real-time data is really helping make the airspace safer, make it easier to fly. And, it, and it's really anchored around this minimum viable infrastructure product, uh, concept because the, the, the data services that I'm showing you right now they're using existing systems, right? We didn't go out and buy a bunch of new stuff. And, and you're definitely, you know, at some point we're, we're looking at maybe putting an Echo Dine in, in Winchester. Um, we actually were able to, to experiment with one at the Apple Blossom Fly and it was great, right? Um, but so that, you know, the ability to, to provide these services and rely as much as possible on existing infrastructure, it keeps the cost low, right? And that makes it affordable for states and localities. Well, yeah, you had kind of, alluded to this a little bit, the idea that it's risk-based, what you're doing, you know, kind of this minimum viable infrastructure, but also performance-based a little bit. So I think we have a slide from that Apple Blossom uh, Festival that maybe you can walk us through some of this as well. This, this kind of gets into a little bit of how you make this stuff real, right? And so the, the purpose, you know, I mentioned earlier of the fly-in was to, to roll the clock forward a couple of years and say, well, what does it look like, right? You've got public safety operations. We've got hobbyist operations. We've got commercial operations. So the first thing I'll draw your attention to is there are a bunch of little orange boxes, right? Those are all the ground yeah. rules and hazards, right? The regional jail, et cetera. So then I'll, I'll, the, the red boxes, right? What are those? So those are basically public notice provided by the town that, that provide information to pilots that this is an open air assembly as described under the FAA's operations over people rule, right? Okay. We're all familiar with this, right? Yeah. What constitutes operations over people? And the short answer is, well, I'm not really sure, right? Yeah. And and the, the FAA will tell you they deliberately left it vague, so there's room for discussion, right? But then operators will tell you, well, I don't know what the answer is. So the town said, look, it's a big festival. It's operations over people, right? 
But then you can see little boxes in there. You know, uh, there's a green one, there's a yellow one, there's yeah. some red ones where we basically carved out space inside the festival because these are areas that were, you know, private parking lots, public safety buildings, fenced off areas. And we, we, the Commonwealth of Virginia and the city of Winchester certify that there are no people there. So you can fly there. Okay. So that's where we had our, our seven different teams form. The green area is where we did our demonstration of um, commercial 107 delivery with drone up. Where we delivered the barbecue, right? The yellow was a corral for the local AMA uh, chapter, the Plain Crazy Club, right? Because the hobbyists are part of this industry too, right? Yeah. They're part of the industry too. And then the other red boxes, those are where all the public safety teams were flying to provide event overwatch. And so, um, so we basically, in addition to providing that configuration, we also provided live real-time feed. So we used the Equidyne to let all of the operators know where the other drones were. We had two non-participating drones, people who didn't get the message and flew anyway, but we were able to manage that and, and keep you know safe distance, right? And then that live ADSB feed, which is interesting because the airport put on put in a notum and most of the, the traditional, the conventional traffic stayed away. But we did have one pilot who came a little close in. But because of the ADSB data, everybody saw it and they moved their vehicles down and we maintained safety. So wow. it was it was a wonderful event. And and for me, a really great glimpse of what the future may be. Now, are you gonna repeat this like the next year in 2023 with the Apple Blossom or somewhere else? Yep, yeah, nope. May 6th and 7th, 2023, we're gonna do this again. May 6th and 7th. Wow, that's right before AUVSI Exponential. So, uh, better hop on your plane there and get to my Law Tech Connect workshop on the 8th, my friend. We can talk about that later. But, uh, so speaking of next year, uh, like, what can we expect from you next year? You mentioned so many kind of partnerships that are underway. California's already live. I think you mentioned Ohio, Jersey, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, maybe Colorado. I just threw that in there. Uh, what, what are we looking at next year, John? As I mentioned, we're going to have a bunch of flight information exchanges going on, right? Alaska, uh, Northeast Ohio, Southwest Pennsylvania, Southern New Jersey, Oklahoma. Um, we're also going to be integrating new sensor types, and we're going to have some really neat projects um, specifically in the, the ones that are already in the works are in Virginia and Pennsylvania and Alaska to roll out this type of infrastructure that we demonstrated in Winchester, right? This sort of affordable real-time micro weather and surveillance data um, so I think, and, and, and we've got a number of other really neat things that we're working on that I can't necessarily talk about because I have to respect people's confidence, but right, you know, right. you know, what's the old, what's the old adage, you know, watch this space. Yeah, I, well, I'm watching clearly. I think everybody out there is watching and if they're, they didn't know about you before they do know, know about you now, John. And, uh, you know, I, I can't even imagine as we end this year, like how many days on the road you had like just gathering this data and forging these alliances. It's, it's actually, it's actually wonderful. I mean, I, I really enjoy it. I mean, I think I've been, yeah, I, I probably logged like 20 or 30,000 miles this year. And I probably know, know more local planning commissions, police chiefs, fire chiefs um, than I ever thought possible. Um, but I will say it's, it's been really fun because I've gotten to see the USA in my Chevrolet. Wow, USA, my Chevrolet. Well, you know, and the biggest challenge that you're really overcoming because it takes someone like you to do this, John, is the fact that every state is different. Every locality is different. You know, people always talk about that patchwork quilt, uh, but you're tackling that by going out there, meeting with these people, trying to understand, because not only are the rules different, but they're, they're authorities, the people, like, because you, you, I remember when you and I had talked before, California as an example, the, the, it's the university system that has a lot of this data as opposed to like maybe a Department of Transportation or Department of Aeronautics or something in a different state, you know? So just figuring that out alone uh, and, and the belly button, I, I imagine, was difficult. It is. I mean, the public safety laws in California are subtly different than Virginia. Um, you know, how the Caltrans system is managed. It's, you know, it's similar, but it's different, right? And so you have to, you have to subtly translate from one region to the other while also trying to make sure that what you're publishing to operators is consistent, 
so, right? So that a UAS operator can go from Virginia to California. And while it may be subtly different, they know what this is. They know it's a hazard. They know it's a supplemental rule. They know it's a public safety. Right, right. So almost like maybe analogous to your minimal viable infrastructure concept, it's almost like this minimal viable compliance set, uh, you know, where, where there are certain things that it doesn't matter where you are that people should just be aware of. And, and probably local rules are one of those and probably uh, critical infrastructure hazards on the ground are another one. So I'm sure you're writing this rule book as you go. Uh, I'm helping and facilitating state and local officials to write. Yeah, um, that's the a answer. good answer. Yeah. That is a great answer, actually, because you don't have the time to write everybody's rules, but uh, to kind of give yeah, them the, the, right the framework, you've given them the framework, John. Yes, and, and, and helping convene the stakeholders, because because for each of these, it's about getting the stakeholders in the room. Like that Winchester configuration for the fly-in, Yeah, I mean, there were multiple days where the police, fire, the local airport authority were literally, literally physically walking around the town, pointing at stuff saying, is it safe to fly there? Is it safe to land there? Right? What's a hazard there? And, and negotiate, literally negotiating how this gets laid out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge. So, uh, anyway, a great year for you. You've got your Ellie show us again. I love that. So what, do you know what the, uh, the, the what it, the symbol looks like? It's an E. It's an E. It's a it's a it's a cursive E. Oh. Of an e. And LE stands for what? Elevate. Elevate a word. Okay. Elevate, Very cool. Elevate Pennsylvania, right? So it's okay. about getting it's about making sure that this industry is successful in Pennsylvania and we get these drones into the sky. Well, I, I love that. And uh we are like just a couple minutes out from our time together here john from the close of our time so very important how do people plug into your efforts because i know they're going to want to yep so i think there's a couple different ways um one is uh, uas.ata-llc.com is our um aviation you know microsite the other is virginiafix.com uh is the location for the virginia fix um the central coast is cc-fix.com and you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, and if you need to get a hold of my email or phone number, I think it's probably pretty easy to find. Um, but, you know, I, and I will just tell you, if you don't hear back from me right away, I'm pretty busy, but uh, please do ping me. I don't mind. I don't mind. No, that that's great. And uh, are there any upcoming shows uh, where people might r bump into you live, John, coming up? Uh, I'll definitely be at AUVSI next year. Um, I will be, I have, I have, I will be in uh, Cuyahoga County, Ohio in January. I'll probably be back out in California in February, probably in the, you know, Santa Cruz, Monterey region. Um, I will be at the Virginia Aviation Business Association Aviation Day, which I think is the third week in January. So, you know, I've got a bunch of stuff coming up, but I have to pull my calendar to get all of it. <laughs> no, I, I, I get that. And by the way, John, you know, this show is about, connections and brett Federson is out there telling you he's happy to support your southwest pennsylvania efforts that's his hometown awesome. and thank thank you for taking the time to talk about this and and again i echo uh brett's comments thank you so much uh i mean it was fun talking to you initially just learning about what you were doing and just to have seen the i would call it exponential growth over the past year what you've been able to accomplish uh ellie aside has been just absolutely amazing so good on you happy holidays my friend and i know you're going to have a spectacular new year we're looking forward to seeing you in 2023 and uh fun. yeah so that's all she wrote everybody we are out here